Hello, family. This is Pastor Al, pastor of Victor Heights Church of San Diego. And I want to thank you for tuning in to YouTube tonight and uh, coming into this broadcast. I want to be able to take a few moments to share the word of God with you. I want to give a very special greeting to our Victor Outreach Church here in San Diego and other people of our Victor Outreach family who are tuning into this all over the world. I'm coming to you from my home and this is my place of prayer and this is where I separate to pray and to study God's word and as you can see behind me uh, watch our church services and just be able to tap into the presence of God in prayer every morning. And this evening, I have a message that I believe is going to speak to you because it answers a very important question that we all have, especially during these times. The question is, what do I do when I feel afraid? What do I do when I feel afraid? There's a scripture found in the book of Numbers, chapter 13. And I want to begin reading in verse 27. This is the story of the spies who went in to uh, spy out the promised land. It's so heavy in that it brings out many truths about fear. In verse 27, it says, Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. And moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there, or the giants. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. But notice here in verse 30, it says, Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession for we are well able to overcome it. And I want to say that to you today. We are well able to overcome these challenges that we are facing today with the Lord's help. But in verse 31, it says this, it says, but the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. Listen to the tone of their voice. Listen to the fear in this scripture. And all the people who saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants. And look at this. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. And so we were in their sight. Today, I want to take a few moments to talk to you on a very important subject. I want to talk to you on what do I do when I feel afraid? You know, as we gather here tonight, we're in the midst of unprecedented times in the earth. You know, we can view these days as days of judgment or days of divine opportunity. I've determined in my heart that no matter what is going on through this COVID-19 plague that is hitting the earth. These are days of powerful opportunity for the people of God. But often, you know, we're skewed by what we see and what we hear in a 24 hour news cycle. I think it's important to tune into the news, but I think at the same time, you have to just tune in enough to be informed and spend the rest of your day building your faith. You know, these 24 hour news cycles are talking about diagnosis, disease and death. Some of us become shaken because when we go to the market, we see people wearing face masks or we look on social media. And now everyone is wearing face masks. All these visuals, all these things that are going on in our hearing, these are a shock to the system. You know, the spirit of fear has a way of shocking our spiritual system. And when we allow the spirit of fear to shock our spiritual system, it could eventually derail our spiritual life. That's why I felt so compelled and stirred to speak to you tonight about facing fear. I think it's amazing to see how 
much fear steals from people. You know, some say that fear is the master spirit, the master spirit that Satan uses to steal from people and to keep them paralyzed from moving forward. Maybe you're viewing this broadcast and in these days of quarantine, there's been days where you felt like you just couldn't get out of bed. Days where you felt like, you know, what am I going to do? You know, certainly these times have turned our schedules upside down. There have been schedule changes. There have been challenges that we're having to face every single day. And understand that the master spirit of fear that Satan uses comes to paralyze us from moving forward in the things of God. Fear has a way of trying to halt spiritual progress in our life. You all know the acronym FEAR, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Now, tonight I, I haven't come to teach you how to never feel fear, but I do have a message that will teach you how to break the control of fear over your life and over your family. I want to tell you right now, the only way to break a spirit of fear in your life is through a spirit of faith. Now, let me say this about faith. Faith is not the absence of fear. People of faith deal with fear. Pastors deal with fear. Leaders deal with fear. The people of God face fear in their life. So faith is not the absence of fear. I'm not saying you're never gonna feel fear, but faith is the ability to move forward in spite of your feelings. That's faith. We all face fear in our life. The enemy tries to penetrate our heart with fear, but faith is the ability to move forward in spite of what you feel. Now, in the scripture, it seems that fear was more powerful than faith. It seems that way. You might ask, is fear more powerful? Well, I can tell you this, according to this scripture, and this is why this teaching is so important, is fear can be more f- powerful than faith. But only when fear is the majority. Only when fear is the majority. See, we as people have a spirit. And our spirit is contagious. In the scripture, we find two, two camps of people. We had the faith camp and the fear camp. Now, the faith camp consisted of two people. Joshua and Caleb, and they said, we are well able to take the land. This is the time. God is with us. Let's go now. That's faith. That even in a moment like this, God is still able to move in a mighty way. We're we're still able to see revival poured out in our lives. We're still able to see salvation in our homes. We're still able to see healing in our bodies. We're even able to see financial blessing. I've been receiving reports from many people in our church that even while some are being laid off, others are being promoted at work, receiving financial blessing. Now, there are two camps. You can be in the faith camp or you could be in the fear camp. Now, the faith camp consisted of two people. The fear camp consisted of 10 people. And what they said was the inhabitants are too great for us. The cities are too strong. We are too small. We can't do it. You know, when I think of the fear camp, when I think of these 10 spies who went into the promised land, I I think of people who had a low view of God. They really did. They were telling God how big their problem was instead of telling their problem how big their God was. And these people really, they had not only a low view of God, but they had a low view of themselves. They said, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. And when we walk in a spirit of fear, brothers and sisters, I I wanna share this with you, is that we actually self-sabotage our own life. When we walk in a spirit of fear, it's like self-sabotage. It's like we're destroying our own future through a spirit of fear. You see, as we look to tomorrow, we may not know what tomorrow holds. There might be some things that are going to be different in our life once this whole quarantine is over. There might be some changes in our life, changes in our relationships. And we may not know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. We've got to make a decision today. Are we going to live by faith or are we going to live 
by fear. How are we going to lead? Are we going to lead with faith or are we going to lead with fear? Are we going to lead our families with faith? Are we going to lead our children with faith? Are we going to point our realm of influence to the problem? Or are we going to point our realm of influence to the future? If there was ever, to, the, to, to God, if there was ever going to be a moment to train your people to walk in faith, it's now. This is the moment to teach your children to pray. This is the moment to teach your spouse to pray. This is the moment for the Marthas to turn into the Marys. That those who are so busy working for God, now's the time to start seeking his face, coming to his feet, getting hold of the horns of the altar, and really activating a spirit of faith in our lives and a spirit of faith in our homes. See, that is why as God's people, we've got to focus on the promises of God for our life, the promises of God for our family, and the promises of God for our future. That's why we, as the people of God, as the people of Victor Outreach, we, we cannot afford to tolerate a spirit of faith in our midst. Someone once said that fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Write that down. Fear tolerated is faith contaminated. And I want to share this with you. God has given us many, many promises. He's given us many promises. He, he says, I know the future. I, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans of good and not of evil. There are many promises, even personal promises that each and every one of us have received in our journey with God. And so even though we have promises from God, it, it doesn't mean that that the promises of God are problem free environments. If there's anybody who has experienced that, it's my wife and I, you know, we, we, we've been through financial problems, a season where we lost our home we've been through death we've experienced death in our own family we have experienced sickness when my daughter was diagnosed with leukemia thank god she walks in healing today 100 percent healing almost five years disease free we've seen our church go through changes we've seen people leave our church come back to our church people who were pillars who succumb to a spirit of fear in their life. We've been through a lot of things. Our marriage has faced trials, times of conflict, times of struggle. Listen, we're not unfamiliar with problems, but we're here to tell you that the promises of God are still real. And we've seen the promises of God come to pass in our personal life. I want to tell you that in the same way God is able to bless us, God is able to bless you even in the midst of the storm. But don't let fear take over. Don't let fear dominate your environment. Don't let fear take over the spirit of your home. This is the time to let faith begin to arise. I am so excited because even in the midst of this pandemic, God is going to give you and I tremendous opportunities in the kingdom of God. I want to share this with you. The future belongs to those who have faith. The future belongs to the people of God who are willing to activate their faith, who are willing to lead in a spirit of faith. Now, how can we defeat fear? I think we have to identify what fear is. I want to take a little bit of time to teach you this before I bring it home. You know, fear is something that seems unreasonable to us even though it seems, actually, let me say it this way. Fear is something that seems reasonable to us, even though it seems irrational. Sometimes when someone is walking in a spirit of fear, irrational things seem reasonable. These are people who are worried about getting struck by lightning. You know, they're afraid about certain things that don't make sense. Some people are afraid to get in an airplane because at one time they saw an airplane crash and they feel like their airplane is going to go down. These are even people who are afraid to dip their toe in the water out of fear that a great white shark is going to eat them, even though great white sharks are not in the water that they want to dip their toe in. You see, I want to tell you that some of these things that we worry about, they will never happen. They will never happen. Now, I know that these are times where we must take proper precautions. We, we, we should do what the government is asking us to do, what our state and, and, and city leadership is asking us to do. But 
Just because we're doing it doesn't mean we need to walk in fear. I think you should, you know, put on a mask when you go outside, make sure you're washing your hands, maintain social distancing. These are all safety precautions. These are natural shields. But understand, faith is a spiritual shield. And I think sometimes when we see these things happening, we allow these things to affect us and make us afraid that they're going to happen to us. Don't claim it. Do not claim sickness. Do not claim disease. It's not for you. Health, prosperity, long life is for you. Also, sometimes, and I think this is one of the greatest fears that we face. Fear sometimes is getting what we want and losing it. I've faced this in my life. You know, we pray for loved ones. We pray for finances. We pray for our purpose to become manifest in our life. And sometimes the spirit of fear comes in and says, you're going to lose it all. You're going to lose your job. You're going to lose your ministry. You're going to lose a family member to sickness. Listen, I came to tell you that's when fear is full blown in your life. You see, what if I get divorced? I just got married. What if I bought a new house and I lose it? What if I start a business and it shuts down? What if my child becomes sick? Listen, these are all fears that the enemy wants to try to bring in. And, and right now, this, this, this evening, I want to cancel those fears in your life. I want to rebuke those fears in your life. I, I came to tell you, everything is going to be okay. Walk in faith and believe God that fear is not going to take over. Also, and this is a funny one, is that sometimes, and this is what happened in the story of the spies, is that fear wants to turn us into false prophets. It really does. You know, this is true of many people, especially uh, people who do not pray and people who are not walking in the spirit. You know, a false prophet is somebody who predicts the future incorrectly. Now, I believe that these are times where we need to really take into account that God is moving. He's, he, he, he's moving. He's bringing uh, correction to some things. He's utilizing these times and seasons to begin to prepare his church for his coming. The Bible says that he is coming for a church that is without spot or blemish. So before there's an awakening, there's a shaking. And we've been so blessed in our church that we've experienced a powerful awakening. October 1st, heaven opened over our church. It remains open to this day. We're counting the days of revival in our midst. The spirit of prayer, the hunger for his presence, the hunger for prayer, the hunger for fasting, the hunger for worship is stronger than it has ever been in 25 years of serving the Lord right here at Victory Outreach San Diego. Our people are praying passionately, relentlessly, all hours of the day. It's like a constant prayer chain. Hundreds of people fasting at the same time. There is a hunger and a thirst in our midst here at Victor Outreach San Diego. We've been blessed that heaven has been opened. But God is using these times of shaking to awaken those who have fallen asleep. There are people in the church right now who have fallen asleep. They've fallen asleep spiritually. They haven't prayed for many months. They've prayed religious prayers. They haven't fasted, some of them, for years. They don't worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. They don't keep the Sabbath. They don't give financially. They don't win souls. They don't reach the lost. They don't activate their gift. This is a moment where the shaking is going to wake up his church like never before. See, sometimes God can use these seasons to shift us to the place where he wants us to be. That's what prophecy is. Prophecy takes us from where we are to where God desires us to be. Now, a false prophet is someone who predicts the future incorrectly. And this is what happened with the 10 spies. God was saying, I'm going to give you the land. I'm, I'm going to give you the land. Caleb and Joshua said, let's go. We are well able. Now's the time. Let's do it. But 10 negative spies or 10 false prophets came and said, we cannot do it. You see, Fear wants us to predict disaster in our lives. Fear wants us to predict the disaster when disaster may never come. 
disaster may never come. That's why this is a moment where you have to take control of your environment, take control of your future, take control of the spirit of your home, take control because God has great plans for you. Is it false to believe for the best? Is it false to say that God wants to still do great things in your life? Is it false to say that God wants to grow you during this season and bless you during this season? Is it false that God is still able to do miracles? He's still able to heal. He's still able to save. He's still able to restore. Are those, is that false to talk about those things at this time? Is it false to say that God wants to protect you in the midst of this plague? No, it's not false. And the reason it's not false is because it's all aligned with his word. His word proclaims salvation. His word promises salvation to our children. His, his word promises healing. The Bible says he, he never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it's not false to have hope. It's not false to believe for the best. So here's what I want to say on fear. Fear is not always sinful. If you've been walking in a spirit of fear... I think if you continue to walk rebelliously in a spirit of fear, it becomes sinful, but it's not a sin to feel fear. God's given us emotions, but we want to turn your fear to faith. Fear is an opportunity. Fear is an opportunity to awaken our faith, to shift from fear to faith. Now, here's three things that will position our lives, and then I'm going to pray. The first thing to do when you feel afraid is run to God, who is your peace. Run to God. Take time to build an altar where you can run to God. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. The Lord has given us His peace. This was one of His primary promises, that we would walk in peace. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound Mind. Philippians 4, 6, Paul said, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And watch what happens. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So what's the best thing to do when we fear? The best thing to do when we fear is to pray. The, the, the byproduct of prayer is peace, according to the scriptures. So the Bible promises that when you pray, peace will guard your heart and peace will guard your mind. When I'm feeling fearful, I pray. When I'm feeling fearful, I begin to pray. I begin to, and my prayer, I don't pray loudly when I feel this way. I get into a quiet space. I begin to talk to the Lord as a friend. I begin to quote his promised scriptures over my life and over my home because fear wants to grip us. And I come to the Lord as a friend and, and I begin to quote those promises, declare those promises quietly, peacefully. I'll play some soft piano worship that brings me right into an intimate relationship, just like I'm talking to a friend. And when I'm fearing fearful and I pray that way, his spirit floods my, my heart, floods my, my body, floods my atmosphere. The, a flood is powerful because when a flood comes in, it comes to overpower and to push out. So when you pray, peace floods you. And the peace of God that floods you begins to overpower your emotions and it begins to push out things that make you restless. It begins to push out those things that are hindering your heart. I, I want to tell you, fear cannot exist where peace is present. The Bible says that perfect love casts out all fear. So what do we do when we're afraid? We pray. The sec let, let me give you this, Psalms 91, 91 verse 14. Look at this here powerful scripture it says because he set his love upon me therefore i will deliver him and i will set him on high because he has known my name and he shall call upon me 
and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and I will honor him. Look at this. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So what do we do when we're afraid? We pray. Also, when I'm afraid, I run to God who is my source. I run to God who is my source. Jesus said, do not fear little flock. Do not fear little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And what this is saying to me is that God cares for us. And in this time, God will not, not allow us to sink when we keep him first. God will not allow us to sink. He says, fear not my little flock. I'm watching over you. I'm watching over everything that I've blessed you with, everything I've given you. He says, fear not because you will not sink. You know, this is a time where God, he will actually provide for those who trust in him according to his vision for their life. You know, God has given some of us a very big vision. And we know that for the size of our vision is the size of our provision. See, right now might be a time where, where, where there might be some things blown away, but you're always going to have what you need. God's not going to allow you to sink. But I want to challenge you, continue to keep him first. Keep him first in everything that you do. The, the Bible says that he will rebuke the devourer when we honor him with the tithe, when we keep him first. Make sure that your negative and fearful mentalities about money don't dictate your future. Learn about the tithe. Learn about the power of the tithe. Learn about the power of giving. Learn these things so that your life can be blessed. While others are sinking, you'll be rising. I promise that. I believe that to be true because we find that in the word. So the first thing is run to God in prayer when you're afraid. Secondly, when you're afraid, run to God who is your source. He's your source of provision. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. You know, <laughs> recession might come to the earth, but there's no recession in heaven. You've heard it time and again. You've experienced it before. There's no recession in heaven. We're not part of the government's economy. We're part of God's economy. And let me give you the final thing before we pray. When I'm afraid, I must run to God's word, which is powerful. Now, I have a Bible. I don't have it with me today that is falling apart. It's my John Maxwell Leadership Bible. I've had it for a number of years. And, and I preached from that Bible last Sunday. And it's falling apart. Some of the pages are falling out. Um, the cover is battered. Um, I have a few Bibles. My first Bible that I have at home. Uh, I have that I ever received when I first got saved. Georgina bought it for me. Uh, I actually framed it in my office and it's falling apart. It, it, I mean, it has notes all over, it has names with phone numbers in it. Uh, scripture after scripture is underlined and I actually framed it. So I've been able to kind of hold on to all of my Bibles. Uh, the Bible that I preach from on Sunday is battered. It, it was with me uh, in Boston when my uh, son was born. It was with me uh, during those five months when my daughter was going through chemotherapy. Um, it's been with me when my marriage was facing problems and uh, we lost our house and we were taking over the church and people were leaving the church and, you know, things were happening. Um, it was with me uh, in some very crucial times of my life. I was thinking about it the other day, I said, you know, I've led this church through many things. And in the 12 years that I've been pastor, um, we, we made it through the recession in 2008. It was amazing that when the country went into recession, our church uh, stood strong. And uh, just last year or a year and a half ago, about two years ago, we just paid off our building in full. We're a totally debt free ministry. It's amazing. You know, we've never had to fire any staff. We've never had to let people go for financial purposes, ever. So God has always kept us in times of recession. Um, times of sickness, God has kept us. Times of turmoil and conflict, God has kept us. Um, personal problems in our lives, God has kept us. And this Bible that I have, if you open it, I put dates by certain scriptures. 
uh, in that Bible. And it, it kind of, I marked the date there to remind me of when that scripture was alive for that situation. So it's not just scriptures, but it's uh, notes written in there, dates written in there, uh, which I believe are prophetic. Prophetic to my life, pr prophetic to my family, and prophetic to my ministry. And I, I bring out all these things about my personal Bible is because someone once said a Bible that's falling apart is linked to a life that isn't. And the only, I mean, the thing that has kept me is the word of God, the promises of God, that in the toughest seasons of my life and in my family and in my ministry, the word of God has been an anchor to my soul. The word of God reminds me not to fear. There are 365 fear nots in the Bible. One for every day of the week. One for every day of the week. This word is constantly telling us not to fear. Don't fear. When you are afraid, run to the word of God. When you read the word of God, your faith comes alive. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. I believe that even as you're listening to this right now, your faith is being stirred. Fear is being canceled. The flood of God's peace is pushing out everything that's trying to hinder your walk with him. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And God's word positions our life against fear. This whole generation in Israel missed the promise of God because of fear. Because of fear. And what I declare to you today is that fear is canceled. And that faith is being stirred in your life and in your home and in your family. I'm sure of it. I can sense it happening right now. I feel the presence of God so strong right now in my, in my life. My heart is actually burning right now. I can feel a burning in my spirit that is coming through these airwaves. I believe your heart is going to burn with faith. That your words are going to speak faith. That what enters your life is going to be everything required to keep your faith alive and burning during this time. And so if I can encourage you today, I encourage you to walk in faith and not in fear. Fear is a master spirit. We rebuke that spirit of Satan right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil be rebuked in your life. Fear be rebuked in your home. Fear be rebuked in your marriage. Don't let words of negativity come out of your mouth in this season. Speak words of faith. Speak those things that are not as if though they were. Declare, I am whole. I am healed. I am strong. I am covered. I am loved. I am a leader. I have a vision. I have a future. Declare my children shall be saved. Their bodies shall be healed. My home shall be protected. Declare the goodness of God over your life and over your home. I want to thank you for tuning in to this today. I pray that your faith will be stronger than ever. Victor Eric San Diego, continue to raise that shield of faith. Continue to do it because his future for you and for us is mighty. Father, I lift up every person of you in this broadcast. And we thank you, God, that fear has been canceled. Fear has been defeated. We thank you, God, that we're not going to allow anything that is contrary to your word to come into our eyes, into our ears, into our hearts. That we're going to speak words of faith, God. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. We thank you, God, that you're moving in our hearts. Our hearts are burning. We thank you that our homes are covered, that our homes are filled with your presence right now. That the spirit of worship is alive. The spirit of prayer is alive. Lord, we declare a fast right now. Father, we declare a fast, Father God. We're going to fast one day, three days, seven days, Father God, against this plague. We're going to fast to cover our 
family, fast to cover our neighbors, fast to cover our leaders, fast to cover those that are working on the front lines against this disease. Father, we fast right now. We fast for power. We fast to get closer to you. We fast so that the Holy Spirit will have a blank canvas to move in a powerful anointing as we speak to the hurting, we speak to the lost. Father, we fast and pray so that you have permission to use us as instruments of revival, Father God. We shall not fear in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for every pastor. I pray for every leader, every spiritual leader. I pray for every father. I pray for every mother. I pray for every single person, every young person. Lord, I lift up the people of Victor Arch. Every child, we cover them right now with fresh oil from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. We pray for our elderly right now. Father, we just anoint our elderly right now, Father God, with fresh oil from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. We count ourselves as protected psalms 91 lord exodus 12 you said where you see the blood you will pass over us father god we plead the blood of jesus over every person who's listening to this broadcast right now father god father we love you we thank you because your goodness and your mercy follows us wherever we go that yea we go through the valley of shadow of death we will fear no evil your rod and your staff protect us they cover us father god we thank you god that even in this moment we're raising the shield of faith over our lives, over our churches, over our homes, over our families, over our communities, over our neighbors right now. Use us, God. Use us at this time. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you're using us. We thank you, God, that you've anointed us for the advancement of your kingdom. Lord, the kingdom of heaven suffer violence, but the violence shall take it by force. The force of our prayers, the force of our fasting the force of our words. Father, we thank you today in the mighty name of Jesus that we will come out of this unscathed and covered. Father God, we declare it, we decree it, we pronounce it right now. We speak it into the environment and we speak it into the atmosphere. Right now, we thank you for your blood that disarms the power of the enemy, that on the cross you disarmed, disarmed all the power of the enemy. Father, we thank you, God, that the enemy has been placed under our feet, Father God. No sickness, no plague, nothing will by any means harm us, God. 10,000 may fall, 1,000 may fall, but nothing will touch us. We love you and we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Walk in faith, family. We love you and we'll see you next time.